Hi, my name is Angus Ho with Daddy Debt, a part of the Ash Management Group. I want to show how you can budget as a full-time engineer, make real estate investments, and live an exceptional family life as a dad. So come along with me in this journey of wealth. I want to tell you a story about the worst tenant I've ever had. It is important to learn from this mistake and to not make the same mistake again. Every landlord will go through a close to horror story of some sort and from the stories I've heard, we all got through this and didn't give up on renting. Not only is it important to learn from this, but it's, but it's entertaining to hear as well. To build camaraderie amongst us landlords and to share what we did differently so that when this happens to you, you will have an example to work off of and not give Learning from this eviction will also get you to your dream goal faster, whether it be that dream house of yours, travel the world in style, and become financially independent and retire early. Learning from this mistake and getting back on the horse will help you repeat the ash method much quicker and easier. So let's begin the story. When I first started renting, I thought, it if I was to be nice to everyone, who could be mean to me? I quickly found out that that was a signal to take advantage of me. Tenants would keep asking for more to see how far they can push me until I say no. The other thing I did was being too lenient on the application process. Even when I see red flags or quirks about someone, I would overlook some of these things. Some of these things are like the credit score reference checks, and getting photo ID from the tenants. Looking back at it, I question, was I able to do it any differently because I was just starting up as a landlord? I wasn't able to afford the luxury of the house being unrented for another month, so I rushed into getting someone in there as quickly as I can. So when this person showed up at the house for a viewing, this person seemed very normal, an older person, absolutely harmless. This person told us that they were recently in a car crash and had some health problems. They also told us that they were in the courts with the previous landlord to get their damaged deposit back. With this being said, they told us that they could not get us, they told us that they could get us first month's rent and only half the damaged deposit. We said okay to it and signed a loan agreement where we would loan this person the other half of the damage deposit and interest free for three months. After that, it would be $5 per month of interest. The rent was also coming from a social welfare program that the city initiated. We've done these things before. They are the best kind of money at times too because government sponsored money will always show up and we always get paid. We were asked to come back once in a while for small things here and there, nothing too out of the ordinary. We get some text messages once in a while about how this person is moving more things in. We didn't give much thought about that because how they want to live their life is how they live it. We got Then we got a call from our neighbor one day that one of the that one of this tenant's moving truck had backed onto the sidewalk and cracked it. The neighbor had recently repaved it so that we could share this sidewalk to the front of the house. They also complained that this tenant would frantically yell at them. This whole situation seemed to have created a rift between the two people because because all of a sudden this tenant called me saying that they wanted to put up a handicap sign on our front lawn so the neighbor doesn't encroach onto their parking space. Well, knowing my neighbor, he parks at least six feet away from the property line. I always remember that parking is something I'm always aware of, especially when it comes to renting. The neighbor on the other side of us is the neighbor that gives us no quarter. That neighbor parks right at the property line, no matter what. Knowing this, I knew there was nothing I can do about the tenant's complaint and moved on. 
Knowing what I know now about this tenant so far, I didn't think there was anything wrong really. This tenant was very open and told us everything that they wanted to do. They wanted to plant a few plants inside. They asked if they can have a dog inside. They all they wanted to put a shelf up on the wall that required it to go into the studs and they wanted to move a person in to make some money with. We were pretty lenient because she paid on time and current and at that time that's all that mattered to us. Right after we signed this person onto a third year, problems started arising. The upstairs tenant complained about bed bugs. Dun dun dun. This marked new terri this marked new territory for me all of a sudden. All of a sudden, the finger pointing started to begin. It was this person's fault. It was the previous tenant's fault. Who was going to pay for it? On and on and on. We got a professional inspector and pest control in there right away. We, we, we heat treated all units. The tenants were asked to pull all furniture away from the walls and heat treat anything that was cloth. That was wash in hot water and dry everything in the highest heat possible. The bug control company told us that we would need to pay for dry cleaning and buy them new furniture so they could throw theirs out. The bill was adding up but I didn't end up paying any of that and whether or not that was the right, de right decision is still debatable. After treatment, everyone was asked not to return to the unit for at least 24 hours. Pest control said that the upstairs tenant did everything right but the downstairs tenant had so much stuff that not everything was treatable. We left it for two months and the upstairs tenant complained again that the bed bugs were back. So we recalled the pest control for a follow-up treatment. This company was willing to recall until the problem was resolved. The initial treatment started in February and now it was April. In April, there was even more finger pointing. It was all the stuff that the basement tenant was bringing in. The bed bugs got to their unit because of a blanket the downstairs keep bringing up. The basement tenant is hoarding a lot of stuff. The basement tenant blamed a little on the upstairs tenant, saying that they brought a new pet in. The basement tenant also started blaming the pest control company, saying that they aren't doing their job correctly and that they should be approaching it with this method and that method, on and on and on. So we decided to tell everyone that we will wait at least three months to see the effects. Before we continue with the last bit of the story, I want to do a little housekeeping and take care of those dislike trolls. Yes, you got it. Smash that like button to help the cause of fighting them off. Well, thanks a lot for doing it. It means a lot to me. It helps with my channel and to keep those trolls at bay. Let's get back on with the story. Well, it's August now. We got the pest control people back in for a third follow-up treatment. At this time, we didn't even know what was going on. Is someone making this bug up for fun? We didn't want to go near the house either to inspect the place, so I didn't even know if a bug existed. The pest control company wasn't going to point any fingers either. They didn't say where the bug originated from, they did, however, start saying that the bugs they're seeing is not old bugs, but new bugs that are coming in. Like as if, if, like as if someone is going to another house with bed bugs and reintroducing the bugs into the place. They were also saying how the downstairs tenant was not cooperative with sanitation where they were unwilling to move furniture and heat treat clothes. We found a sofa that was riddled with bed bugs that was sitting outside. Pest control didn't pinpoint if the bugs got on there from the house or if the source of the bed bugs was from the sofa. So we forced a cease and desist order on the tenant to correct the hoarding actions and to heat treat all their clothes. We also forced the basement tenant to move out the new person they moved in. They also changed the lock so we asked them to put the original back on and to remove a fake CRTC camera 
that they had installed outside of their home. The situation was getting worse and slowly spiraling out of control. My partner didn't want to make any decision on eviction just in case they continue to trash the place. The upstairs tenant also stopped paying rent at that time because they thought that the building was condemned. The downstairs tenant was also starting to get angry with the cease and desist. They wanted more money. It was our problem for not dealing with it when the previous tenant was there. I told the basement tenant that some of the stuff in here had to be thrown out and that set them off even more. The situation was getting worse and worse day by day. We officially decided to evict everyone upstairs for not paying rent, downstairs for substantial breach of contract due to lack of cleanliness. Neither tenants complied with the orders and neither moved out. We had to get this through the courts. This process took some time and money. We applied for a hearing for both tenants. September rolled around and the court hearing was on the first week of September and now we're two months behind on rent and the downstairs won't move out. We finally got judgment on the rent and for them to move out by the third week of September. The move out process was just as crazy. They parked this giant trailer blocking the garage so we had to threaten them by towing it. They dumped a whole bunch of garbage into our lane that we had to clean up. Well, after that, they did finally move out. No more drama. The downstairs tenant moved out as well, right with them. So that substantial breach never made it to court. On their way out, for both of them, however, was damage deposit. They fought hard for their damage deposit, that these bugs destroyed everything they had, sofa, clothes, even their personal health. The downstairs also claimed the same thing. Despite the two months of missing rent, and the fees associated with the pest control, we decided to give full dam damage deposit back. I didn't want to risk more court cases and potentially losing it and be paying tens of thousands of dollars. So we agreed full, de full damage deposit back and we go our separate ways. Well, that was my story. Painful and quite the experience. This fiasco cost me about $5,000 in total damages, including the missing rent. Not being able to rent it back out for a month while finding a new tenant and the cost of pest control. I've definitely had better days and a story to remember forever. I took this as a $5,000 lesson to always do a reference check, take into account their credit score, and if, they, if they're a red flag that we need to take and if they have a red flag, we need to take it seriously. Well, one year later, we are back up running like normal again. I'm still an everyday dad working and budgeting hard as an engineer, trying to stay out of debt, until I discovered the ASH method to strategically invest it in real estate and the stock market. Because of that, I can run a side company called ASH Management that manages over $3 million in properties. Now, I travel the world with my wife every year and live in a 2,000 square feet house. Until, finally I became a millionaire, 90% plus of the way there. Also, join me at the Daddy Debt Facebook group to talk about your finance questions. Ask the YouTube community your questions by commenting below. If you like to hear more budgeting, engineering, or real estate tips, please leave a comment for what you want to hear smash that like button, subscribe button, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I post new videos every week on Sundays. From the Ash Management Group, this is Daddy Debt, saving you money.